Selkirk remembers Flodden, 500 years on. The year 2013, the date the 1st of May and work has started on the Remembrance Garden to remind the people of Selkirk and surrounding district that a terrible battle took place at Branxton Hill in 1513, better known as the Battle of Flodden. 15,000 men lost their lives in about four hours. 80 of the dead came from Selkirk. In this battle, King James IV, King of Scots, was killed along with other nobility of the time. The only man to return to Selkirk was Fletcher, so the legend goes, and his statue of remembrance, erected after 400 years, stands in front of the Victoria Hall. This memorial garden is laid out in the Victoria Hall grounds after permission was sought from and granted by Borders Regional Council to the Town's Common Good Fund so that the people of Selkirk and all over the world can associate them together. The work on the garden commenced on the 1st of May and the finishing touches were completed on Wednesday the 4th of September 2013. All the work in the garden was carried out by local businesses and tradesmen. This shows what a talent the Scottish Borders has on offer and a great example of this is on show in the garden. Doogie James designed the garden and supplied the plants while his men carried out the work. Doogie will explain his inspirations. I'm Doogie James, James Garden Landscaping. To design a garden for Flood and 500, the memorial, uh, for the 500th anniversary and the committee had a quite a clear idea about what they were they were looking to achieve. We were given a brief for that. My job was to interpret that brief to make it work in the in the space that was allotted to it and one of the things that we wanted to do was to provide a garden that would be of real benefit to the town of Selkirk moving forward as well. The other things that we've, we've taken into account were balancing up the fountain to, to really lift the presentation of that, that whole area, that, that garden to the side of the Victoria Hall. And we've used natural sandstone, which complements the sandstone that's used on the hall itself. And we've used cobbles at the centre of this garden. There is a, a muster area, and then there's the path out of the muster area, heading for the battlefield, heading off, heading off to the east there. We've included plants that would um, provide flower colour and leaf colour throughout the year and berries so you know there, there's, there's a vibrancy about the garden that should make it an attractive place to sit and reflect, sit and chat um, really all around, all around the year, not so much in the winter time but the, the heathers will still be blooming then. Uh, the committee also asked us to make sure that it would be something that would be easy to look after um, so there's no onerous maintenance requirement. It'll take a little while for the shrubs and for the heathers to, to mature and fill the space. But once they've done that, it's not going to be a difficult garden to look after. So It's been a great project to be involved in. Very delighted to have been asked to do it. Very delighted that James Garden Landscaping could, could uh, make, uh, make that kind of contribution to, the, to this amazing, amazing memorial. And, The idea for the garden came about when the English Heritage Group set up an eco-museum on the internet. An eco-museum is a new way to show and keep history alive for all to see and enjoy. At the moment, there are only two eco-sites in Britain. The opening scenes for the film came from the annual medieval fair at Traquair House. The insert tapestries were crafted by ten ladies from Coldstream. Stuff you mixed up, didn't you? Aye. Right. Right.
Thomas Riddle and son cut the books from sandstone blocks and put the pages in place. Faulkner Grieve designed the centrepiece and cut it out so that Stephen MacDonald of s and Stoneworks St Boswell's could cut the design from marble and engrave the pattern on it. The inscriptions on the pages tell the story of the Battle of Flodden and were penned by Alan Massey. Beltane Studios Peoples produced the plaques for the wall in bronze. All this work was completed by marking and fixing the plaques to the wall, a sterling effort by Border Spook. All the lads have time to reflect as the epoxy resin sets. It's my pleasant duty to welcome you all to the official opening of the Flodden 500 Memorial Garden. And I'd like to invite His Grace, the Duke of Buccleuch, to perform a duty and say a few words. Mr Chairman, Provost, ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you how touched and honoured I am to have been invited to play a very modest part in this act of commemoration, one as you've just heard, so long in preparation, so deeply thought about, and so clearly an expression of the wishes of the people of Selkirk. I think it has been the most uplifting of demonstrations of the hold our history can, as it should, still have over us that this 500th anniversary year of Flodden has already, with a climax still to come, been so enriched with fine words written and spoken in poetry, in prose and in song. At the common writings and wherever folk have been gathered in their shadow, many have participated in long walks and in rideouts echoing the actions of our forebears. But for me, there is something missing 
something I believe this garden can address, what I think might be called the testimony of silence, a place for private thoughts. You have asked me to declare this beautiful garden open, and I will, of course, with great pride, do that right now. But in a sense, I feel that it is already uh, open. What I can do with warmth is to thank you and your committee and the creators for giving us something very special, very permanent, and very poignant. My final word is this, is that what really needs opening are the hearts and the minds of all of us here to the opportunity which this garden offers to reflection. It would be entirely presumptuous of me to suggest that, but entirely appropriate now, if I may, to ask the Minister for her encouragement and her blessing on what you have achieved, Minister. Thank you, Your Grace. Gardens figure prominently in the Bible. The Garden of Eden, the place where there was once uninterrupted access to the God of creation, the God of relationship, it was a garden where men, women and God worked together, met together to enjoy each other's company. That stopped when we humans took things into our own hands, going our own way. War and dissension ensued. May we always remember the sacrifice that was made those 500 years ago, that peace might be possible. Thank you for the folk who had the vision for this garden. Give them a sense of a job well done. And so we dedicate it now to the memory of those men from Selkirk and the surrounding area who willingly went to serve the king, who went to serve their country, and who fell at Flodden. Father, for all who will walk by this garden, who will sit in the seats, we ask that they would recognise the sacrifice of these men so long ago, the dedication and willingness to put king and country before personal life in order that peace might prevail. As we watch this garden now grow through all the seasons, help us to place our trust in you, the one who is willing to be with us through the seasons of our lives when we turn to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Margaret. <laughs> if you really think about it, what we've done this year, if we haven't got it right, we'll not have to think about it in a hundred years' time. <laughs> and I'll be very surprised if anybody standing here today will remember what happened. A big thank you to all the people involved in this garden for the help given to Frank in allowing him to make this video for posterity. Very lucky.